definitely listen to me about this. He was an intellectual property attorney at a company called Netscape here in the Valley and had just left as well. And, uh, and so I, I said, listen, if we can actually get people to move away from these healthy perception products versus you know, plain water or something that just gets people to drink water with just a little bit of fruit in it, then we could actually change health in America. And that was my goal. It wasn't ever to go and launch a beverage company. I really saw it as like, as I had been fooled, I had been tricked, I had been on autopilot listening to marketers basically tell me like, have this, it'll make you better. And I had seen for myself that it hadn't done that. So, uh, so shortly after having this idea, I, uh, I was taking fruit and putting it on the stove and boiling it on the stove. I would uh, be very careful if you try that. I almost lit the house on fire multiple times after putting skins in, in uh, a pot and, uh, and not watching it carefully. Basically what I was doing was boiling the oils and extracts out of the fruit and not just using the pulp, depending on um, the fruit, but also uh, using the skins, the, the skins of, of the fruit. So, uh, so today we don't do it in my kitchen anymore. We have a third party that, that does this for us, but we're using real fruits. Um, a lot of people ask us, you know, why do you say it's vegetarian? Um, the, this frightening thing that I realized as I was developing the product was that a lot of companies don't actually, when they use flavors and natural flavors, they are not using real fruit, so um, and sometimes not fruit at all. So uh, a little trick of the trade that I learned was that many products use um, things that are all natural, but are not necessarily what they are actually named. So um, cockroach wings are commonly used in flavorings. Um, bone marrow is also another thing that's used. A lot of people, even if you enjoy bone marrow, you don't necessarily want it in your water. Um, so those are like little things that I learned along the way and I said, why can't somebody just use fruit? Like that just seems the way to do it. And it's expensive and that's, and that's really, you know, the answer to it. So I looked at, uh, I looked at figuring out first in my kitchen and then found a, uh, a co-packer to, to do this product. That's the lingo. It's, it's, uh, it's called co-packer versus bottling. I kept running around the country looking for, uh, looking on first on, on my computer, but looking for a bottler and they're not called bottlers, they're called co-packers. So it was a whole new language too that I had to figure out how to actually produce a product when I didn't come from the CPG or, or beverage industry. And, uh, and so we produced the product um, and, or decided to go forward producing the product. My husband sort of, I can't say that I actually invited him in to actually come into the company with me, but I think he was concerned when he saw that I was writing $50,000 checks off of our personal bank account to buy bottles and caps and fruit and all kinds of stuff. So he was like, oh, you're, you're going to the co-packing plan, I'll come with you, just to make sure that I wasn't gonna put us into bankruptcy. And so he came along with me and saw how great it was that we were actually developing something that people could actually enjoy and drink, and especially people like me who weren't plain water drinkers. And after doing, or I should mention, prior to uh, dragging him to the, the co-packing plant with me, I announced to him that I was pregnant with our fourth child, which was not a planned child. My son Justin, who is 12 years old, says, you really shouldn't tell people that I was an oopsie baby. But and anyway, so that was a, uh, so he was, he was uh, in my belly while I, was, uh, while I was looking at starting this company, which is super fun. And so after uh, we got the product all in, in place, I went to, uh, back to the guy at my local Whole Foods and said, listen, you know, you told me to develop this product and I've done it and we have a few cases for you. And it was the morning actually that I was having a planned C-section. So at 10 o'clock in the morning, we hop into Whole Foods in San Francisco on uh, Franklin in California. And I bring it over to, there, to him and I mean, I'm like out to there. 
And he says to me, so you weren't this pregnant the last time that I saw you. And I'm like, I know, I was only a few months pregnant and now I'm actually delivering a baby this afternoon at two o'clock. And I, he thinks he thought it was like so insane that I was actually coming in and trying to get him to actually put this on the shelf. And I, I tell people all the time, look, it, you do what works, right? Like he was, he put it on the shelf, I think because he really thought like this lady is absolutely insane that she's gonna go deliver a baby this afternoon and dropping off cases uh, cases first. So I go in uh, and uh, deliver Justin and I get a phone call in the hospital the next day from the guy at Whole Foods and his message was the product is gone. And I said, I still didn't believe that we had started a company um, and that this was actually going to work and that people were actually going to buy it, even though I had actually delivered it. And I said, who took the product? I really didn't believe that anybody bought the product. And so 10 cases later in 24 hours, um, and we were really the first company that had an unsweetened flavored water and were really pushing this concept of unsweetened. And so, uh, so went home from the hospital, made a few more cases, deliver it to, back to, to Whole Foods, and we thought, okay, we're off to the races. We've got a product. As I mentioned, a lot of the uh, vocabulary around beverages, um, because I hadn't worked in a CPG company, it was very different from tech. And so for the next two years, uh, we basically, we meaning my husband and I, jumped in and we were doing everything. We were, we were manufacturing the product, we were selling the product, we were you know, basically doing everything, doing every trade show. I dragged friends of mine from AOL in to actually help me work the trade shows. And, and I loved it and, and in many ways, like I look back on it and I've had, I've spoken at different things and said, it, and people have said, look, you were a vice president at AOL. You had you know, a great career in tech. Like, what made you do this? And I thought, like, I have always, I love learning. And that's the most important thing for me. And when I feel like I'm getting to a point of mastering something, I'm ready to move on to the next thing. And, and so that for me was, was and I, I highly encourage you guys as you grow your careers, to think about that because it doesn't mean that just because you're on a path and you're continuing every year to get, you know, manager and director and, you know, and going on and on, it doesn't mean that you have to stop there, right? It doesn't mean that you have to stay on that path. And for me, I, I really, really needed to go do something and something that would really make a difference. And as I mentioned, I thought that that was, that was a nonprofit initially. And when I got into the beverage industry, I really thought like this is creating that change that I really want and it's really getting me excited and I want to wake up every day and I want to go do this and I'm learning all along the way. So